Now, a full hour of mystery adventure. The Saturday night feature of NBC's All-Star Festival. In 30 minutes, it's The Man Called X. Right now... Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Brought to you by the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headaches, neuritis, and neuralgia. By Chesterfield, the only cigarette that combines mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By your local Ford dealer, who is now displaying the new 1951 Ford. The car that's built for the years ahead. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though, trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to end up with me trying my level best to shoot myself. Morning, Commissioner. Ruth said you had an assignment for me. I do, Steve. Ever been kidnapped? Kidnapped? Well, I remember a redhead once who claimed we were out of gas. I'm sure you put up a terrific struggle. Like a tiger at bay. Hmm. Well, that's all very interesting, but I didn't send for you to hear Chapter 33 of your memoirs. You're oh. leaving for Berlin on the next plane. I'm flying clear to Berlin so somebody can kidnap me? No, you're flying there to find out who's been kidnapping a few other people. You know, I think you'd better start from the beginning, Commissioner. Steve, apparently there's been a nasty little racket flourishing in our occupation zone of Berlin for some time. It only came to light last night. What kind of a racket, Commissioner? A prominent German named Mueller was kidnapped several days ago. His wife received a ransom note telling her that if she didn't raise the required money, her husband would be turned over to interests in the uh, eastern zone of Berlin. Oh, oh. Apparently, this Mueller had made a few enemies there. I see. Sort of sell Mueller to the highest bidder, huh? Yes. His wife raised the money, and Mueller was returned. But when he tried to grab the man who returned him, he was shot and killed on his own doorstep. Mm. Look, this is all very interesting, but... Isn't kidnapping a matter for the Berlin police? What's it got to do with us? I'll tell you why it's our baby. Apparently, the kidnapper was a U.S. government official. What? Now, look, don't try to tell me you believe that. I'm just giving you the facts, Steve. What's behind those facts could be another story, and I'm convinced it is. But that's what you're going over there to find out. But I still don't see what indicates that a government official is behind it. Here's how the deal was set up. Mueller had applied for a building permit several days before he was kidnapped. Those permits are handled by a special office, which is run under our supervision. A few nights later... A man who claimed he was from that office came to see Mueller. He told Mueller that uh, they needed further information before they could issue the permit, that Mueller would have to come to the office. The next thing his wife knew was when she got the ransom note. Brother, what a sweet mess that sounds like. I've been in touch with Jack Fallon, who heads up the office over there. I've got a preliminary plan set up with him. He'll fill you in on it. And Steve, get over to Berlin. Work with Fallon, then go anywhere and do anything you have to, to smash this racket once and for all. Well, that's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, will continue in just a moment. Here is something you should know if you ever suffer from the sudden pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. It's a way to ease the pain, often within a few minutes. A way that is incredibly fast and effective. It's Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy to take tablet form. Thousands of people were first introduced to Anison through their own physicians or dentists. But today, these tablets are in such widespread use that all drug counters have them, and anyone may enjoy their benefits. Next time you suffer from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, by all means, try Anison. You'll like the convenience of Anison tablets, and you'll be delighted with Anison's incredibly fast action. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison. Ask for Anison by name today at your druggist. <laughs> Uh, 
Sure, I've got my assignment. Just a little matter of dropping over to Berlin and trying to smash an innocent little kidnapping racket. And I've got an uneasy hunch that somewhere along the line I'll be running into somebody who'll say drop dead to me and then do their best to arrange it. It's Monday when I land in Berlin and I head for Jack Fallon's office. That's a nasty mess, Mitchell. My theory is that somebody right here in my office has been putting the finger on the victims. Uh, these applications for building permits, Fallon, do they contain quite a lot of information about the applicant? Yeah, they do. You see, to do any building in Berlin these days, you've got to have a considerable amount of money. That has to be listed on the application. Now, that's the point, Steve. Anybody who has access to those applications could spot the likely kidnap prospects. But how about this business of threatening to turn the victims over to the eastern zone? Well, as you can imagine, there are a lot of Germans in our zone who have come out politically against the outfit in the eastern zone. Now, you take any ten Germans with money, and you're pretty sure to find seven or eight of them who've made enemies there. I see. Uh, tell me, Fallon, just who in this office has access to those applications? Well, my office manager can give you a better answer to that than I can. Uh, Oh, Herr Wittig, I was just going to call you. I was on my way to see you, Herr Fallon. Some reports for you to sign. Oh, come in. I want you to meet Steve Mitchell from the United States. Mr. Mitchell would like some information from you, Wittig. But of course, Herr Mitchell. I'd uh, like to know how many people in this office have access to the applications for building permits. The files are available to Herr Fallon, of course, and to myself. Yeah, who else? The three clerks. Who are they? Well, Frau Gunther, a woman of about 60, Fräulein Gottlieb, a younger woman, and Herr Linder. What uh, can you tell me about them? I mean, have any of them ever acted in such a way as to arouse your suspicions? That's a hard question to answer, Herr Mitchell. They're all hard-working people. Frau Gunther particularly. She keeps mostly to herself. Fräulein Gottlieb, I have no problem with her, other than to keep her boyfriend from calling for her too early in the afternoon. Boyfriend? She's quite friendly with an American sergeant. Sergeant? I see. Uh, what about the other one, Linder? Herr Linder has notified us he'll be resigning soon. It seems he just inherited some money from the death of his uncle. Okay. I guess that'll be all, Wittig. Thank you. Of course. If there's any other information I can supply here, Mitchell, do not hesitate to call on me. I won't. Well, you know any more than you did before, Steve? How long has Wittig been your office manager, Fallon? Oh, about a year, I guess. It... Hey, wait a minute. You don't think he could have anything to do with it? Look, anybody who has access to those files could have something to do with it. Yeah, I guess you're right. The commissioner said something about having set up a plan with you. Yeah, he thought it might be a good idea to have somebody file a fake application and make it look like he was a red-hot prospect, mm. you know? A pigeon, huh? Well, that's what it amounts to. Then we trail along and see what happens. Yeah, sounds like a good idea. You got a man for the job? Mm-hmm. little character named Benner. Might be kind of dangerous for him, you know. Oh, Benner will do almost anything if the price is right. Besides, I think he can handle it okay. He's a very cautious little gent. <laughs> Never takes an elevator if there's a stairway, you know, that sort of thing. Can we trust him? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's done a lot of jobs for us in the past. Mm. Oh, excuse me. Mm. Hello. Uh, uh, oh, yes, Benner. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, uh, right, yeah. You'll be contacted there by a man named Steve Mitchell. You're to work with him. Well, Benner's on his way to the Chronic Hotel. He's going to register there. Okay, I'll get on over there myself. See you later, Fallon. <laughs> I head for the Kronik Hotel and ask the desk clerk whether Brenner's arrived yet. Herr Brenner, yeah. He just started up the stairs. He is registered in room 43. He's going to climb four flights of stairs? Brother, he really is a cautious guy. Huh? Ah, skip it. I'm not quite that cautious. I'll take the elevator. I go up to the fourth floor and down the hall to 403. I start to knock on the door, but just then... No! 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 The yell comes from the floor below me. I pound down to the third floor landing. The window at the fire escape is open, and on the floor, sprawled against the door to a broom closet, is a little guy with a few assorted bruises on his face. Benner? Benner! Uh, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, I'm all right. What happened? Well, somebody was waiting for me on the landing. Tried to cure me. But when I called for help, he went down the fire escape. Hey, Wait. Who are you? Hey, hey, why the gun? I demand to know who you are. Relax, Benner. I'm Steve Mitchell, the guy who's supposed to contact you. I must have proof of that. Here, here, take a look at my credential. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, you don't believe in taking any chances, do you? In this business, to take chances might prove fatal. Yeah, matter of fact, this deal looks like it's a little too fatal for you already. What do you mean? We better pull you off the case. It looks like they're on to you. No, I insist on going on with it. But you're no good to us if they know who you are. It would be a simple matter to enter an application at another name, uh, at another address. My sister lives at 35 Gartenstadt, mm -hmm. so I can use her house. I don't know. Herr Mitchell, a deal was offered to me. 
accepted. I accepted it. I insist that the deal stand. Even after almost getting killed, huh? Well, I'm used to such things. I make a good living almost getting killed. Okay. I'll have Fallon rig up another application for you with 35 Gartenstrasse. Then I'll meet you over there and we'll wait to see who turns up for you. And what would be your plan in case someone does turn up? Well, I'll have a police car with a two-way radio. If somebody calls for you, I'll follow and contact some other cars and we'll all converge on the spot where they take you to. Mm-hmm. Well, very well. I'll go rig the deal with Fallon. You pack up and get over to the Garden Strauss address. I'll meet you there in an hour. I go downstairs and out of the hotel. Then, three blocks away as I'm heading for Fallon's office, I realize Benner forgot to tell me what name to use on the new application. I start back to the hotel. Then I spot the crowd on the sidewalk in front. I speed up. A couple of policemen are trying to push the crowd back. Then I see a body on the sidewalk covered up. Get back here now. Get back. What happened, officer? Men fell out of one of the hotel windows. What? You know who it was? Yeah, yeah. There's not much left of the body, but we found his papers. It was a little man named Benner. Steve, this is bad. It looks like they were on to Benner right from the start. It sure does, Fallon. He didn't just fall out of that window. He was probably slugged and pushed. It must have happened right after I left him. Where does that leave us now? I don't know. I put in a call to the commissioner back in the States as soon as it comes through. I suppose I could round up another man to take Benner's place. Yeah, same idea occurred to me. I'll take it. Hello. Steve? Commissioner? What's on your mind? Huh? Hey, this connection is lousy. Jiggle the phone, will you? Is that better? Yeah. I said, what's on your mind? I want to get married. You heard me. You're right in the middle of an assignment. You call me all the way from Berlin to tell me you want to get married? Well, a fellow gets to thinking about those things once in a while, Commissioner. Now, look. I wanted you to be the first to know, Commissioner. All right, all right. So you're going to get married. Who's the unlucky girl? I don't know. You don't know. I want you to pick her out for me. Steve, are you out of your mind? No more than usual. Hey, do we have any female-type agents running around in this neck of the woods? Agents? Uh, I get it now, Steve. Let's see. Yes, Martha Kane is just finishing up an assignment in Vienna. Martha? Hey, she speaks German, doesn't she? Yeah. Good. Okay, contact her and tell her to come here to the Berlin and go to the shop department house. There's an apartment there under the name of Schiller. Martha is now Frau Schiller. All right, I'll contact her. What are you up to, Steve? Oh, just cooking up a little gag, Commissioner. If it works, I think we can bust this deal wide open. Well, if it doesn't work. Well, if it doesn't work, I'll leave you my best hand-painted necktie. You know the one that lights up in the dark? I don't like that. Oh, you ought to be a whiz with it. Now, Steve... See you later, Commissioner. Well, what are you going to do, Steve? We need another clay pigeon to take Benner's place, don't we? Ah, uh, yes, but... Uh... Okay, so I've got me the pigeon. You mean this woman, Agent? No, I mean me. In just a moment, Act Two of Dangerous Assignment. Now we invite you to hear from Bob Hope on his recent visit to Hawaii. Well, here we are on the island of Oahu. We had a very smooth trip over. At first, we flew at an altitude that didn't bother me. We had to go up higher because the salt water was ruining the tires. <laughs> just, just out of San Francisco, we developed a little motor trouble, and the pilot yelled, throw everything we don't eat overboard. A Navy cruiser picked me up about two hours later. <laughs> Let's sell Chesterfields. You know, the real test for mildness in a cigarette is as old as tobacco itself. Just open a pack of Chesterfields and smell that milder tobacco aroma. Then light up a Chesterfield and prove what every tobacco man knows. Tobaccos that smell milder, smoke milder. So always buy them. Chesterfield, my cigarette. Chesterfield, Chesterfield, always wins first place. That milder, mild tobacco never leaves an aftertaste. So open a pack, give them a smell. Then you'll smoke them. Don't forget to give Crosby for Christmas. I mean the Chesterfield Christmas carton with Bing as Papa Santa Claus. And now back to Dangerous Assignment and Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. You're really going through with this deal, Steve? What do you think, Felon? Well, okay. Tell me what you want me to do. Fill out an application in the name of Otto Schiller. That's me. Yeah? Give the shaft department address and make me sound like a nice, juicy prospect. Mm-hmm. I just married a wealthy woman. Then stick it in with the other application. Yeah, that way you won't have to be seen around the office. Look, another thing. Can we count on the cooperation of the Berlin police? Well, sure. What do you need them for? A radio car. Oh, 
I'll arrange that. Okay. Well, I guess that's it, Fallon. I better get over to the apartment. Be careful, Steve. Well, I'll see you when it's all over. I hope. So I go over to the Shaft apartment house and settle down as Otto Schiller, wealthy German. I'm not kidding myself about the various assorted things that could happen to me, all of them bad, but I know it's our best chance of finding out who's running this racket. Understand you want to get married, Steve? Oh, hey, Martha. Come on in. <laughs> right. You sure got to Berlin in a hurry. I caught a plane from Vienna as soon as the commissioner contacted me. Well, make yourself at home. It's half yours. Mm. What's the deal all about, Steve? The commissioner didn't give me any details. Not that I mind being Mrs. Mitchell, but... Uh... You mean Frau Schiller. Yeah, Frau Schiller. Well, it goes together something like this, Martha. Somebody posing as a U.S. government official has been kidnapping wealthy Germans. Mm. If the relatives don't pay off, he threatens to turn the victims over to the eastern zone. Where do you fit in? I'm the next victim, I hope. So, well, you know, Steve, you haven't changed a bit. You always did manage to figure yourself into the sweetest spots. Well, if the deal works, somebody will come for me here. You slip out the side door and downstairs to the radio car, follow us, and contact the police. Okay. Uh, when are you expecting the caller? I don't know. Could be minutes or it could be days. Days? Any ideas on how Herr Schiller and wife are supposed to pass the time waiting? Hmm? Well, as a matter of fact... Yeah, that's what I thought. Like I say, you haven't changed a bit. Hmm? We'd better stick to my ideas. Oh? Well, what are your ideas? Canasta? Canasta? Now, look, can't you think of any better way to pass the time than... Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, I just remembered we don't have any cards, so I guess we'll just have to... No. Hey, where'd that deck come from? My purse. Be prepared, I always say. Hmm. Looks like you haven't changed a bit either. <laughs> okay, okay, deal them up. A natural in five, three jacks and I'm out. Swell. I suppose you know that wins you another game. So it does. I suppose you also know that makes five straight games. You've cleaned me and broke. Don't tell me your troubles, lady. Canasta was your idea. Yeah, I know. Steve. Better get into the next room. Right. Here, Otto Schiller? Yeah. I'm Mr. Brown from the office that issues building permits. Yeah. Regarding your recent application, Herr Schiller, we need some additional information. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to come to the office with me. Yeah. One moment, I get my code. Well? This is it, Martha. Ever see the guy before? No, but he's probably just the leg man on the operation. Get out the side door and down to the radio car, Martha, and then follow us. Right. Here, yeah, Schiller. Coming, Herr Brown. Be careful, Steve. Remember, I'll be right behind you in that radio car. <laughs> Martha slips out the back door of the apartment, and I join Mr. Brown in the living room. We go down the elevator to the street, and Brown motions toward the curb. Here's my car, Heschula. I sent my driver on a little errand. He should be back in a moment. Yeah, we'll wait inside. Get in, Mitchell. Huh? You heard me. And you can cut out the yaw nine routine. Inside, you get a slug. A little surprise party, huh, Brown? That's right. I've got another surprise for you, too, Mitchell. I can hardly wait. What is it? Uh, you'll love it. Take a look out the window. Hmm? Martha. Yeah. Your little pal who was going to tag along in the radio car. Get her inside, Fritz. Yeah. <laughs> he was waiting for me at the side door, Steve, complete with guns. Oh, this is just great. I thought you'd be overjoyed, Mitchell. Where are we going? To see the boss. Oh? Who is the boss? <laughs> You'll find out, Mitchell. Okay, Fritz, let's get going. We take a few After more of the ruined section of the city, we finally pull up in front of the deserted warehouse. Martha and I are hustled inside and tied up. Then Brown and Fritz leave. Doesn't look so hot for us, does it, Steve? No. I'm sorry I got you into this, Martha. Well, I've only got one regret. That you ever left Vienna? No, that we wasted so much time playing canasta. <laughs> Great time to have both hands tied behind me. <laughs> Hey, wait. I, I think I can twist my hands around a little. Turn your back to me. Maybe I can work on your ropes. 
Okay. Uh, who do you think the brains behind this deal is, Steve? I'm afraid I know the answer to that now, Martha. Look, they were onto our whole routine about the radio car. Uh, Not many people knew about that. Benner knew, but he doesn't count. He's dead. That leaves just you and me and Fallon. Fallon? You think he's the one? Sure adds up that way. Hey, I got one of your ropes loose. Yeah. Wait, I work my hands around a little now. Good, keep it up. But, Steve, if Fallon's behind it, well, Hold it. Somebody's coming. Keep your hands behind you. Okay. Steve, if they take you and leave me, I'll try to get loose and get help. Oh, yeah. I brought someone to see you, Mitchell. The boss. What? Hello, Mitchell. Benner. <laughs> but it can't be. You're dead. You got pushed out of a hotel window. You're right. The real Benner is dead, Mitchell. Real Benner? My name, in case you're interested, is Linda. One of the clerks at the office. Quite right. Yeah, I think I get it now. Benner started up the stairway of the hotel, and you were waiting for him on the landing. You slugged him and started to push him out the window. Then you heard me coming. True, true. So I concealed Benner's body in the boom closet. You assumed I was Benner, so I decided to go along with it. After you left, I pushed the real Benner's body out the window. And I spilled the whole plan to you. That's how you knew about the radio car routine, huh? <laughs> yeah. You have it all figured out now, Mitchell. Too bad it's too late. Huh? So what happens now? I was going to kill you, Mitchell, but now I've changed my mind. Gee, thanks. Oh, you're quite welcome. You see, it occurred to me that the United States agent undoubtedly possesses much information of value to certain connections of mine in the eastern zone of Berlin. What? I think they would pay me a great deal of money for you. Now, wait a minute. So I'm going to take you to the eastern zone. I see. Well, that's a cute little plan, but there's just one hitch in it. And what is that? The borderlines of those zones are pretty heavily patrolled. Just how do you plan on getting me out of this zone? <laughs> oh, that's, that's quite simple. I've used the device before. Device? What device? You have been posing as a man named Schiller, yeah? All right. We will proceed on that basis. You are a resident of the eastern zone who's had an accident while visiting in the western zone. I'm your doctor returning you to the eastern zone in an ambulance. Got everything figured out, haven't you? Of course. Vaughn? Yeah? You will stay here and guard the girl. Foots will drive the ambulance. Okay. Look, if you think I'm going to let you stuff me in an ambulance and... and, and... I had hoped for more cooperation from you, Mitchell, but very well. Vaughn? Hmm? Yeah? <coughs> now, get him into the ambulance. <laughs> In just a moment, the conclusion of Dangerous Assignment. Ladies and gentlemen, the new 1951 Ford, the car which is setting a style trend for the future, is now at your Ford dealers. He wants you to see this car and to check its 43 look-ahead features. The automatic ride control, for example, gives you added comfort by automatically adjusting the ride to the road. New key turn starting and a rear deck lid that pops up automatically are two of the features which give you new convenience. There's new style and beauty, both inside and out. New luxury lounge interiors are upholstered with rich Ford Craft fabrics in harmonizing shades to complement your choice of exterior color. And there's traditional Ford economy, for the automatic mileage maker matches timing to fuel charges with such accuracy that every drop of gasoline is used. None wasted. Visit your Ford dealer soon. Check all 43 look-ahead features. Then test drive the new 51 Ford. You'll agree you can pay more, but you can't buy better. When I come out of it, I'm strapped on a stretcher in the ambulance. My head is completely bandaged except for two eye holes. There's even a strip of tape over my mouth. So, you're conscious again. Uh, we're almost to the eastern zone, Mitchell. As you see, the setup is complete. I'm your worried doctor crouching over you. Above you, the bottle of blood plasma, the rubber tube leading along your arm under the blanket. And in your ribs, uh, do you feel this? <coughs> I see you do. <laughs> Needless to say, it's a gun. I'm holding it against your side under the blanket. And if you try to give any sign to the border guard, well, I'm sure you know what will happen. American guard. He is waiting for us to stop. Of course, Fritz. The routine examination. 
An examination that we will pass with flying colors. He's coming around to the rear of the ambulance. We're ready for him. Aren't we, my friend? <clears throat> okay, okay. What do we got here? This patient is Herr Otto Schiller, a resident of the eastern zone who had an accident while visiting in the western zone. I'm returning him. Oh, you as doctor? As you see. All right, trot out the papers, Doc. Here they are. His papers, my papers, and the report of the accident. Okay, just hold the phone when I look him over, Doc. Uh, please hurry. You see, the patient's very weak. I'm giving him a transfusion. His life depends on it. Yeah, I'll speed it up. Won't take a minute. The sergeant keeps nodding as he checks the papers. They must be pretty clever forgeries. Right now, I feel like a chicken with his neck on the block waiting for the axe. With Brown guarding Martha at the warehouse, she can't get loose and bring help. Then it hits me, a wild idea, but it might pay off. He would told the sergeant my life depended on a transfusion. I look up at the bottle of plasma hanging over me, then at the rubber tube. My wrists are strapped to the sides of the stretcher under the blanket, but my hands themselves are free. I can feel the rubber tube running along in the back of my hand. I twist my fingers around it until I get a good hold of it. Then I jerk as hard as I can. Hey, the plasma bottle broke. Yeah. Got I, any uh, more plasma in the ambulance? Uh, why, no, but... Driver, the... turn the ambulance around. Wait. Now, we got a dispensary back about half a mile. You can get more plasma there. That will not be necessary. What? Look, Doc, you just told me the guy had to have a transfusion or he'd conk out. Yes, what I mean is there's a hospital in the eastern zone. Just three blocks ahead. It'll be closer. Huh? Yes. Well... No. Sergeant, I warn you, if you delay us further, you may be responsible for this patient's death. Well, I guess you know best, Doc. So it didn't work after all. I can feel the gun jam harder into my ribs under the blanket, but I know he won't shoot now. Then another idea smacks me. I may be signing my own death warrant, but it's my only chance now. I twist my hand around and grab for his gun hand. He tries to jerk it away, but I hold on. Mm. What's the matter, Doc? You getting kind of pale? Mm. This is the end of this case. <clears throat> Sergeant, I demand you let us proceed. Otherwise, my patient will die. Okay, okay, Doc. <laughs> the sergeant stands back and starts to close the door. It's now or never. I hope I've bent the gun down enough so the slug will clear me, but I can't wait any longer. I jam my thumb against the trigger. Hey! The slug scorches along my back. Gun! Mitchell, you fool! Well, what do you know? A doctor holding a gun on his patient. I will... You'll do nothing, Jack! Go! No. Joe, grab the driver. Now, we'll that just goes. get this that tape off your mouth, fella. You sure ain't acting like a sick guy to me. <laughs> Thanks, Sergeant. But now, give me back my mustache, will you? <laughs> Who are you? Steve Mitchell, government agent. Ah, getting taken for the well-known ride, huh? Yeah. How about getting me untied? Yeah, sure thing. Got a Jeep I can borrow? Yep. All right. Gonna take somebody else for a ride? I'm gonna pick up a guy named Brown and a girl named Martha at a warehouse. <laughs> that makes three of you. Three's a crowd. Ah, we'll bump Brown real quick. Huh? Well, go on. It's getting interesting. What do you do after you dump this guy, Brown? Well, knowing Martha, we'll probably play canasta. <laughs> Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jondo, with music by Robert Armbruster, and is produced and directed by Bill Karn. Be with us again next week at this same time, when Brian Donlevy, starring in the role of Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. <laughs>now stay tuned for another big mystery program on NBC's All-Star Festival. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.